So this one's gonna be again about the yes, you know, the book summary that we went through or that we are going through the past like five days, six days, maybe even more. Um, it is still a great book. It really is a great book with a lot of tips, a lot of secrets, as they call it, and a lot of information and a lot of value. And I totally enjoy going through it. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. And this is what we're going to do. You know, today we're actually going to finish up with this one because there are only like 16 points or secrets or statements or phrases or whatever you want to call it left. Therefore, I guess and or I at least hope that we are going to be able to finish up with this one, which just, I don't know, leads me to going through something else just in a second episode for today and also just going through something else tomorrow as well, which which is good, I guess, I assume. I don't know, but it was quite a, a good experience to, to go through another book summary once again, you know, because I don't know, I've, I've actually started with quite only going through book summaries, um, but then in the meantime, it was more like, okay, articles, because I found a lot of great articles, especially from James Clear. In the end, it, I just somehow got to book summaries again, and it, it was nice. But as I said, more after the motherfucking intro. As always, as every single day, as we do it every day with a lot of passion, you know, because because I'm, <laughs> I'm seriously having a lot of passion for what I'm doing right here. And I really also have to thank you, you know, for clicking on this video or clicking on this podcast and going through this with me. But, you know, just because I've already said it, there's also, so if you're on a YouTube video, there's also an audio only version of this particular episode, which means that you're able to listen to it, which means that you can do just something else besides that. You can just listen to the podcast, get a bunch of information, get a lot of value, get a lot of just entertainment, hopefully as well. And, 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 and you can do just something simultaneously. You might be just walking your dog, you might be working out, you might be grocery shopping, you might be driving in your car, you might be just doing something, you know, the part is, or the thing is, or the point is that you're able, you know, to do that. So please check out the links in the description. And also if you're on a podcast, you know, if you have just somehow discovered the podcast and not the YouTube video, then I would also totally suggest you to check out the YouTube video once, so just that you can see, okay, what is this dude doing there, you know, because there's also a lot of value just attached, quote unquote, if you can actually say that, because I don't know, um, to the YouTube video, you know, because you can actually see what I'm going through and many other things but yeah um, as I've already mentioned we stopped at 43 or something I guess therefore we're going ahead with 44 obviously thanks <laughs> so 44 Framing a message by focusing on what the audience stands to lose is more persuasive and influential than what they stand to gain. Pretty easy explanation, and I've been talking about it for way too often, I guess. But we seem actually to we seem actually to to feel more pain when we lose something than we gain kind of satisfaction or gain pleasure when we get something. It is pretty funny, you know. I guess we in general just are feared to lose things, and we are feared to kind of not have something but if we then get something it is like okay you know i got it and it is fine you know but it's not like amazing it's not like insanely good or something it is just fine you know it is just good something that i've been talking about for way too often homeowners were up to 300 percent more likely to carry out recommended energy efficiency improvements in their home when they were told that they would continue to lose an average of 50 cents a day than homeowners who were told they could save 50 cents a day. Um, I do just realize that I've already went through this one, but uh, it's fine, I guess. It's fine. Uh, the 45th, always accompany your request with a strong... Okay, I've also went through this one. The 46th one, before asking your audience to generate multiple reasons in support of your position, consider just how easily they will be able to do so. If the task seems like a relatively difficult one, ask them instead to generate just a few reasons. Advertising copy that asks readers to name 10 reasons to choose a BMW led to lower evalu evaluations of the BMW and higher evaluation evaluations of Mercedes. Then the copy that asks the readers to name just one reason to choose a BMW. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I really believe, I guess, I'm just assuming right now, I don't know, I'm not working for BMW, I'm just not educated in this space, but I guess, I don't know, we just don't like the pain of thinking of several reasons why we should be doing something. 
I guess it is just an uncomfortable kind of situation. Therefore, people are just also feeling uncomfortable with maybe buying a BMW then afterwards. But, you know, if it's, if it's like, okay, just tell me one reason, which is a really simple request and we're going to feel not stupid, we're going to feel amazing. You know, we just, we came up with one reason or one just, yeah, actually reason why we should buy a BMW or why a BMW is great or whatsoever. And then we feel good about it. You know, we feel amazing, you know, because, because we just went through this question and we gave them one answer because they requested one answer and maybe even come up with two answers, you know, and then we actually feel way more good. <laughs> we then feel way more better, yeah, <laughs> than uh, actually coming up with one, you know, when they request one, you know, because we kind of are, you know, above average and we are so great and we are so amazing, whatever, you know, I think you know what I mean. The thing is, we just really hate feeling stupid, you know, something that I've seen, you know, and also something that I, I've heard in Seth Godin's Akimbo podcast, I, I would really like to link it down in the description, but I do just not remember which one it was, which is really a pity because, you know, in the past few weeks, I guess, actually, yeah, weeks, I've been listening to Akimbo while I was meditating or while I am meditating. And it is a pretty nice experience, you know, because I still get into this meditation state, which is amazing. You know, it feels great. Start meditating right now. Just stop the podcast, start meditating. Just, you know, get some information online and then start. It is insanely good. You know, it is really an amazing thing, at my point of view, at least. Like, for me. For you, it just might not be good, you know, because we all individuals, we all are somehow wired individually, which is good, which is amazing. The thing is that I do not remember what I was talking about. You know, let's actually <laughs> move on. The 47th one. Statements are often more persuasive than questions because we favor messages that are clear and convey a sense of certainty. Participants who received products that were accompanied by a statement preferred them and found them to be much more interesting than when the same products were accompanied by a question. This product is amazing. Rather than, is this product amazing? Or something, I don't know. So to make your marketing messages lively, keep an element of novelty in your words and choose while maintaining clarity. If, on the other hand, you are faced with the challenge of persuading risk-averse people, then it is even more important to use easy-to-understand language. You know, in general, the language that you're using, the tonality that you're, that you're using, just the words you're using, which, you know, might be the language, might also not be the language, I don't know, is very important. And it still really, 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 really comes up to whom you're talking to. You know, if you're just talking to a lot of smart people, then you're obviously going to just use different words. You know, you're obviously going to just use words that are compelling to them. You know, words they like, words they favor, words that just are kind of related to them in such way or in some way. And then, you know, if it is a person that is just really kind of quote-unquote dumb as fuck, <laughs> then um, you're going to really use easy language, you know, because they wouldn't understand you and they wouldn't also buy your fucking product. You know, if you would be just using 120 IQ words and yeah, you know, they wouldn't just not like your product. They wouldn't like your message. They wouldn't just don't understand your fucking message. And this is the point, you know, the 49th one. Rhyming phrases are characterized by greater influence, meaning that they are mentally processed more easily and are therefore more persuasive. If you're responsible for writing slogans, models, trademarks or jingles, consider using rhymes. They should increase not only the likability of the message, but its perceived truthfulness as well. I guessed and I also assumed, if you will, that it is actually somehow the case, but I really have to say that I haven't been thinking about likability, you know, because the thing is, when I'm in school, and I'm in a graphic design school, if you didn't know, it is really like, okay, sometimes I have to come up with some slogans, or with some mottos, or whatever you want to call it, jingles, nah, I guess it's really more like slogans, you know, sometimes I do have to come up with some slogans, and then, I don't know, like, I'm a general person that dislikes things that everybody else is doing, so I just always try to just do something my way. I'm always doing it in my way, but I'm also just willing to do something that is like, okay, this one is mine. You know, I am kind of sh can show it to people like, okay, this one is mine and um, the other ones are, are not mine. <laughs> kind of, obviously. The thing is that then I, I guess, you know, I, I assume, you know, this is how I work and therefore I assume that I have also been thinking about just having a motto, having a slogan that is not rhyming, just because I thought like, okay, everyone's is rhyming, therefore mine's not gonna rhyme. But I guess, you know, if it is actually more likable, 
by people. You know, when there's a rhyme in this certain kind of slogan, whatever it is, then um, I'm going to use it, you know, because I'm basically designing for my teacher. Unfortunately, you know, you just really have to think about it. When I'm designing something, it is really not about like, if I like it, you know, if I find, if it is actually kind of aesthetic, if it is working, if it is something, it just really has to be in the favor of my fucking teacher, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm basically designing for the teacher. The 50th one, what you experience first determines the perception of the next thing you experience. A home improvement company was able to increase the sales of one of its top of the range backyard hot tubs <laughs> by over 500%. Like, wow, isn't it then five times more or something? Never mind. By A, telling prospective customers that many buyers of the top of the range model reported that having it was like adding an extra room to the house and then B, asking them to consider how much it would cost to build another room on the side of their house. Really, really interesting. It's a really interesting one. And I think, and I believe, and I have to say that it's a really good one. You know, I really like this one just because it's like, it's just all right. You know, the first thing is like, okay, you're telling a person something that somebody else said. But the the, the funny thing is, you know, as I'm just thinking about it, you don't even know if they want to have a, an, another room in their fucking house. They just don't know, you know? But you're saying it like, okay, you know, a lot of people said like, okay, they're having another room in the house. Maybe it is something that a lot of people want to have, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna kind of debate about that. But I don't know, like, and then you're saying like, okay, you know, well, what would it cost? And then they're like, well, yeah, you know, it is way cheaper to buy ourselves a hot tub. And then they're having a, another room in their fucking house. Well, in the backyard. Pretty funny. You know, pretty funny, but also pretty fucking good, I have to say. The 51st one. People are more likely to stick to programs and ta tasks if you offer them evidence of how they have already made progress towards completing them. Yeah, because it then feels like, okay, not so painful to start it. You know, because most often it is actually a lot of pain for us to start something. You know, to start another habit is just really a lot of pain. And... People do not want to have that. People do just want to have it easy in the starting point, which is also very important. You know, if you want to build a new habit, then starting it out very easily or making the starting point very easy is a pretty crucial thing. But, 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 people who were given a loyalty card with two already uh, affixed stamps were more likely to claim their bonus than those who did not have a head start. It's a pretty nice thing. Fuck yeah. You know, it is a, it is now a little bit more about marketing, you know, I have to say, which is also great. You know, I like it. I like it. The 52nd one. Naming influences consumer preferences. Naming influences consumer preferences. Ambitious names such as Millennium Orange prompt consumers to try to discover, in the absence of any meaningful information, what the makers of the product are trying to convey with that name. So does it mean like, okay, having just an uh, outlandish name is a pretty nice thing because people are going to get curious, you know, even though it's kind of like, you know, the same thing as, okay, it's just orange or it is just like, well, you know, even though millennium, hmm, you know, generation, something like this, maybe it's also compelling to them just because of this kind of relation that they're having with this kind of word, maybe. The 453rd one. We tend to feel less sediated when we consume things slowly, especially when those things are part of a wider variety. Our recovery from sediation can also be influenced if time is left between consumption periods. The 54th one. Memory aids ensure that marketing messages don't fade. Any major adver advertising campaign needs to integrate the essential images, characters or slogans of the ads into the in-store product displays and product packaging the consumer sees when making a purchase, purchase de decision. Of course, you know, it just makes sense. You know, just makes sense. Why? Because they see it, you know. If the product in the advertising is just a completely different one than you see in the store, then you're not going to buy it, you know, because you're not going to be sure if it is this one, you know, if it is actually this new cool Mr. Clean. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the 55th one. 50, 55th? Fifth. Viewing ourselves in a mirror causes us to act in more socially desirable ways. I guess so. Children took fewer sweets from a confectionery bowl when they had to look at themselves in a mirror beforehand. Yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, because we see ourselves and we then feel like, okay, other people are also seeing us and we actually see us because we never ever see us. The 56th one. 
Feeling sad affects our decision-making abilities. Of course, sad buyers were willing to purchase that item for around 30% more than were emotionally neutral buyers. And sad sellers were willing to part with the item for around 33% less than were their emotional neutral counterparts. I believe so. The thing is, do then... Uh, well, I do just think about music, you know? Does that mean if I'm playing sad music in my store, even though, you know... I don't know. I think you have to just really be conscious about it and you really have to, to, to look for it. Like, if it's just really fucking sad music, I don't know if people actually want to come into your fucking store, you know, first of all. But would they actually buy more if there's sad music, which is really emotional, whatever, in your store? I really hope that, that, that store owners and companies and whatever don't use this, you know, because I don't know. Like, I would leave this place, you know, because I hate sad things. I don't want to have it, you know, I'm really trying to kind of get everything out of my life that is kind of sad, you know, I do not want to have that, you know, I do not want to want that. Therefore, like, yeah, fuck off and piss away. <laughs> 57th one. People's decision-making abilities can be impaired by events, not because they induce negative feelings, but rather because it is an emotionally charged issue. Participants would had early practice thinking in an unemotional manner were willing to pay more for the set of 10 CDs than for the set of 5. 58. We are more sus susceptible, whatever it means, to influence and persuasion if we are distracted. People walking around an outdoor baking sale were more likely to purchase a, ba a cupcake when the vendors referred to them as half cakes rather than cupcakes. But only when this was followed by they are delicious. What are half cakes? I've never heard half cakes. Half cake. Can't I just... I think I could. What is when I'm just doing it like... Search with... Look up. Yeah. Nice. No result. Thank you. The 59th one. You know, just... You know, we're just going ahead. Coffee makes us more receptive to influence and persuasion. Participants uh, who had consumed caffeinated beverages before reading... Well, you know, so let's not talk about coffee alone. So let's also talk about energy drinks and all the other fucked up shit... Participants who had consumed caffeinated beverages before reading controversial arguments were 35% more favorably disposed towards that position than when or then were those who drank an unadulterated drink. Unadulterated ad drink. Are we now talking about alcohol or is it about just caffeine? Don't know. But the last one and the 16th one, personalization boosts ad performance. The most effective kind of personalization is non-intrusive. And non-intrusive means nothing, apparently. Let's, let's actually look that up uh, after I went through the recommended readings because maybe there is something that you also want to read on your own. The first one is the power of moments. Why certain experiences have extraordinary impact by Chip and Dan Health. Heath, I'm sorry, I've also read that one. The next one is predictably irrational. The hidden forces that shape our decisions by Dan Arily. And the last one is triggers. 30 sales tools you can use to control the mind of your prospects to motivate, influence and persuade by Joey Sugarman. And I've also read that one. So you might be able to find that somewhere on the channel. I guess, I hope, I assume. So yeah, maybe you check it out. Maybe you look for it. Maybe you even listen to it, you know, because it's also available as a podcast. Yeah, yeah, motherfucker. Um, but let's actually look up non-intrusive. You know, I've heard it. Adjective, tending or apt to intrude. Fuck you. Coming without in... Okay, now they explain it. Um, I haven't said anything. Coming without invitation or welcome. Intrusive memories of a lost love. Well, okay. It's actually a pretty nice explanation. Coming without invitation or welcome, you know? I just wanted to make a joke, but I actually couldn't think of something. But, 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 we aren't done for today because, as always, we are also going through a Quora question, you know? A nice, easy, little, small Quora question. You know, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be insanely good. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. One, two, nothing, okay? One, two, three. Ah, well, well, no, I don't want to... Meaninglessness, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about meaninglessness. Should we talk about exercising? Um, well, one... What is the German translation for abortion? Um, <laughs> let me think. <laughs> Abtreibung, I guess. 
Yeah, I think it's Abtreibung. Yeah. If you actually, you know, were interested in that, I don't know, it could be the case. I don't know, like, there's just so many different... How can I be a good student? Just be one, you know, just learn a lot. Self-motivation, you know, let's actually talk about this, you know. How do I get myself to become motivated and just study all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you wouldn't actually, you would actually never ever study all the fucking time, you know, it wouldn't be possible because it still depends, you know, if it is something that you like to do, then it is possible, if it is something that you kind of like to do, then it is totally not possible because motivation comes from a place, in my point of view, comes from a place of being happy while doing something, you know, if it's, you know, if there is something that makes you happy while doing it, then you're also going to do it, you know, you also get motivated and you feel pretty good about it and whatsoever, so you're going to just do it, period. But if it is something that you just don't like, you know, if it is something that pisses you off, something that you even hate, then, I don't know, for me, it just makes sense that you're not motivated to do it, you know, just because there is no pleasure, there is no kind of, I don't know, like there is no kind of good experience that you're having with it, somehow, or something that you can get from it. But I don't know, like, how can you get motivated to, to study something, you know, when you're not really like it? Or, you know, because, because the thing is, I assume that this person just doesn't like to study. Just because, like, okay, if you're not studying all day long, it just means, okay, you just don't like it. You know, it is something that maybe also not comes natural to you. But maybe you do just have to think about ways to study, you know, you can listen to things, you can watch things, you can uh, write things, you can speak to people, you can do so many different things. Maybe you do just have to figure out the best way for you to learn things and then you can get motivated to do it. But uh, in the first place, to actually get motivated, because motivation is definitely a second thing, you know, it comes after something. And the first thing is actually doing, doing it, you know, just start learning and maybe you get the motivation to actually keep doing it, you know. Because most often, motivation comes afterwards. With that being said, I guess it's a fairly, fairly, fairly short question, short answer. Well, actually, short answer and also short question. Therefore, like, yeah, I think this is going to be it with the episode. And it's been a pleasure. You know, I really have to thank you for being on this kind of journey with me. It's been amazing. I've liked it. Really liked it. But I'll uh, see you the next time. I at least hope. So please subscribe to the podcast and also to the YouTube channel to never miss out on anything. Yeah. Also rate the video, rate the podcast, you know, with thumbs up or the stars or whatever there is. Please do it. Would just really mean something to me and would you just also kind of give me somehow a feedback or just write me a comment or write me on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, everything because I'm having everything. <laughs> but yeah. I wish you the best health of happiness and also success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on how you're going to be remembered. Um, which means your legacy, you know, because we can totally shape our legacy and we can totally influence our legacy, even though something is to be said, and which is no matter how nice you are, no matter how good you are, there's still going to be someone that hates you or just doesn't like you, you know, because it is what it is. Well, um... Also, you know, think about your purpose, you know, and three questions that might help you with that are what are you trying to change, why are you here, and what's the last one? Fuck. <laughs> so why are you here, and what bothers you, bothers you the most, you know, so what pisses you off, basically, you know, because this actually could also lead to a business idea, you know, because often it just kind of... Yeah, a business idea kind of was born through just somebody being pissed off by something. But yeah, with that being said, I hopefully see you the next time. And also please subscribe and I'll, I'll see you. Thank you.